வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் தி அப்பர் லிம்ப் ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி இன் திஸ் கிளாஸ் வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் தி பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் அப்பர் லிம்ப் ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் மோஷன் மோர் ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் மசில்ஸ் ஆஃப் த எல்போ ஜாயிண்ட் அண்ட் ஹவு தீஸ் மசில்ஸ் காஸ் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் at the elbow joint let's move forward so the elbow joint is this joint that is uh, formed by the the long thin bone of the upper arm called as a humerus the bone underlying the upper arm is called humerus and the two bones that form the forearm which is the radius and alna radius is on the thumb side and alna on the little finger side these two things radius alna humerus right since there are three bones that are involved essentially there are three joints that are possible one is the joint between the radius and alna at the proximal end radius alna joint at the proximal side then the joint between the radius and humerus and then the joint between the ulna and the humerus these are the three possibilities so which one of these constitutes the elbow joint by the way let's remember the elbow joint has a single degree of freedom right that is it's a hinge joint it has only one degree of freedom this movement is called flexion and extension so there are these three joints radio humeral joint alno humeral joint and proximal radial ulnar joint remember radius and ulna are like this so this is say the radius and that is one more bone this is the ulna and they both uh, not like that so there are two joints proximal distal the joint on the proximal side the radio ulnar joint on the proximal side appears near the elbow the one that is on the distal side appears near the wrist right in general when we say the elbow joint we usually refer to this humero ulnar joint or ulno humeral joint this is what is commonly referred to as the elbow joint so whenever someone says elbow joint this is the joint that they are referring to so this is the humerus this is the ulna and this is the radius remember there is also this this is the proximal radio ulna joint this is the proximal radio ulna joint this is the ulnar humerus joint this is what is generally called as the elbow joint this is the elbow joint as it is called so what are the muscles that are responsible for uh, the motion at the upper limb specifically the elbow joint so these muscles are located in the upper arm to start with so biceps shortly called as biceps it has two heads technically called as biceps brachii biceps brachii has two heads a short head and a long head and then there is a muscle called triceps generally called triceps but technically called triceps brachii then there is this brachio radialis there is the brachialis not shown in this picture and then there are muscles in the forearm or the lower arm these are flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus flexor carpi ulnaris flexor digitorum superficialis and then there is the pronator teres we will not be looking at uh, 
the origin insertion and action of all these muscles we will take the most prominent muscles among these and discuss their origin insertion and action at some level of detail so let's look at the major flexor of the elbow joint which is biceps biceps brachii the short head attaches to the coracoid process which is uh, forming or nearly forming the the part of the shoulder it's quite close to the shoulder right and the long head attaches to the glenoid tubercle of the scapula again part of the part of the complex system of articulations that together form what is called as a shoulder right the insertion is on the back side posterior part of the radial tuberosity so the attachment is somewhere posterior side which is here on the radial tuberosity somewhere here is where you are looking at right major action is to supinate the elbow joint or supinate the arm remember supination is this configuration in which you can hold a bowl or you can hold a soup supination so when the when the arm is like this to do this you need to supinate the other is flexion flexor of the elbow now a question is um, mm, well uh, if one muscle has two functions why is it that at any given point in time either i supinate or i flex suppose i want to do only one of these two actions i am able to do it if this muscle is responsible it is not like when i am flexing i am always supinating i can also do that it's pronated and i can also do that and i can also you know i can simply do this without flexing so it seems like a, an amount of independence is achieved but how is a question that uh, i will let you think for some time so you can think about this why is it that i am able to independently perform supination and flexion of the elbow joint although at uh, although the same muscle is responsible for these two functions think about that we'll come back to that in a future video right so then there is the brachialis brachialis you know is on the antero medial and antero lateral surface of the lower half of the shaft of the humerus so antero medial antero lateral lateral means on the side medial is towards the midline antero means on the front side right of the lower half of the shaft of the humerus somewhere here is what you are looking at and uh, the and the insertion is closer to the ulnar tuberosity right again same function elbow flexion so then you have the triceps brachii which is a major extensor of the elbow joint right its long head is on the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and uh, on the posterior side right so on the posterior side means here uh, closer to here right this is the muscle that comes and then it attaches on the posterior surface of the olecranon process of the ulna somewhere here is where this attachment is so if this muscle contracts you are going to have so this part is going to contract and then the elbow joint is going to extend right so that is the reason that this this muscle is essentially almost fully located on the posterior side right then you have the brachioradialis this is again a flexor of the elbow joint what are the other two flexors that we saw that uh, are responsible for flexion of the elbow joint one is uh, biceps brachii the other is brachialis then you have the brachioradialis this is you know 
origin it has its origin in the upper two third of the lateral supracondylar ridge and uh, remember from the name i can guess that it is attaching the radius right base of the steroid process of the radius responsible for flexion of the elbow joint so there are indeed three flexors of the elbow joint right then what other muscles then you have muscles that are located across the elbow joint but don't necessarily play a role in the action or movement of the elbow joint also one more thing to note is that some of these muscles uh, like uh, the flexors and extensors also help in stabilizing the shoulder joint by keeping the uh, the shoulder in its place so some of them are responsible for that some muscles whose bodies are, are present across the elbow joint particular whose origin is in the upper arm but whose function may not necessarily involve the movement of the elbow joint we are classifying them as uh, elbow joint because they cross the elbow joint they don't necessarily play a role in movement or action of the elbow joint right one is the flexor carpi radialis muscle this is is responsible for flexion of the wrist for that action right medial epicondyle of the humerus anti back brachial fascia and intermuscular septa okay so right so so it's uh, a muscle that originates in the upper arm and it is inserts into the metacarpal bones somewhere here relatively long muscle the, so insertion is on the metacarpal bones this is responsible for flexion of the wrist right and palmar surface of the metacarpal bones not on the back side so this is the dorsal surface the posterior surface right so on the anterior surface or on the palmar surface is where you going to have that because that makes sense right so because if this muscle is contracting right so the muscle starts here and it sends its tendons like that and if this muscle is contracting the arm is going to get the hand is going to get pulled like this this is the action that is called as wrist flexion then you have flexor carpi ulnaris this has two things right two functions one is flexion of the wrist joint the other is adduction of the wrist joint but uh, what exactly is this action this is we say, we mentioned this this is abduction is also called as radial deviation but in general we prefer to use instead of abduction ulnar deviation did not that makes sense because this is a muscle that attaches across the ulna right so the humeral origin is at the medial epicondyle the ulnar origin is at the medial margin of the olecranon process so you know it starts here right so this is the the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle right the attachment is in the fifth metacarpal and uh, the pisiform hook of the hamate bones which is a bone in the hand responsible for the wrist flexion and ulnar deviation okay then you have flexor digitorum right there are two three types of these flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum profundus etc right so this sends four tendons so there are four tendons that get attached to the base of the proximal phalanx this is the proximal phalanx the segment 
of the finger that is closest to the palm is called as the proximal segment or the proximal phalanx, right? And then it splits into two and then reunites to the sides of the shaft of the middle phalanx. This is the intermediate phalanx. The, the segment in the middle of the finger is called as the intermediate phalanx or the middle phalanx of the four digits. Right? These four digits it attaches and reunites and then attaches here. Because of this reason, when this tendon moves, you are able to perform that action. This is the this is the flexion of the middle phalanx at the proximal interphalangeal joint. The joint that is found or that is formed between two phalanges is called as the interphalangeal joint. And that interphalangeal joint that is on the proximal side is called as the proximal interphalangeal joint. And that interphalangeal joint that is on the distal side is called as a distal interphalangeal joint, sometimes called shortly as pip joint and dip joint. These are the pip joints, these are the dip joints, right. These are formed within the finger. So, flexion of the middle phalanx by moving the pip joint, proximal interphalangeal joint. Then what do we have? So, let us look at these movements at the elbow joint, you have this uh, flexion. So, you have this, you have this flexion extension, flexion extension of the elbow joint and then, you know, and then supination pronation, right. So, essentially at the elbow joint, when we are discussing, we are interested in supination and flexion extension. These are the movements. Pronation and supination are not exactly movements of the elbow, they are produced at the nearby radio ulnar joint. Remember, elbow joint refers to the humero ulnar joint. But then again, you know, this movement is a relative movement of radius and ulna, right? A rotation of the radius and ulna that is called as the radio ulnar joint, right? So, uh, with this, we come to the end of this video. In this video, we looked at uh, the various muscles that form or that cross the elbow joint and the specific movements that these muscles contribute to. Thank you very much for your attention.